welcome to Palindrome ASMR. Today I'm going to be changing up the format a little bit. I think me tapping on things is not exactly what I want to do. Um, and I mean, I still like doing ASMR, but I think it should be more focused on just a relaxing sort of meditative atmosphere where the tapping remains at a minimum because it can be distracting. Um, I am proposing a question here. Do you like it when I tap on objects? Or do you like it when I simply talk without tapping on objects? And I am going to be demonstrating a video without tapping so that you can get a feel for what this kind of video will be like and so I'm asking you do you like it better when I do tapping because or do you like it better when I simply talk to you and ramble about various things because I can do either one. I just want to know what you guys want. This is the fidget cube box, by the way. That's upside down. The fidget cube box. So recently, I, um, I've been playing a game called Planescape Torment which is a very interesting game, to be honest. It is probably one of the most well-written games I have ever played. And that may sound a little bit weird. What do you mean, a well-written game? Well, by this, I mean most of the interaction in the game appears through text. This is a game from 1999. And while I have mods to make it look better, it is still a game from 1999. And the view is classic, um, what is it called? Well, it's a tabletop engine. It's an engine, a game engine. If you don't know what a game engine is, what happens in the development cycle is that uh, developers don't build their games from scratch, or they rarely do, unless it's a simple game. They rarely build their games from scratch. Instead, what they do is they acquire engines, which are platforms that can allow someone with less coding knowledge than it takes to code an entire game, interact with the game world. So instead of coding and saying, you know, move this, you know, apply this, move this, say this, the developer works with a interface like a 3D modeling software, except instead of modeling, they are pathing the movement writing the dialogue, designing the world by importing assets and placing them. So the engine is what drives the game. That's pretty obvious since the name is engine, but multiple games will use the same engine. One of the most popular now is Unity. It is the engine that drives, I don't know which games, I'm not very well versed in gaming knowledge, but it came as a surprise to me when I learned that developers didn't build their games from the ground up. So that is why I'm talking about game engines. So the game engine for Planescape Torment is the same one as Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. It is a D&D simulator. All of the attacks and all of the 
um, interactions are based on the uh, Dungeons and Dragons, I think it was 3.5, because this is a 1999 game. And um, D&D, old D&D, has this confusing mechanic called Thaco, two hit armor class zero. And a armor class is the rating of how hard you are to hit. But instead of going up, instead of a higher Thaco, meaning you are harder to hit, a lower Thaco means you are harder to hit. And <laughs> that is confusing because it is counterintuitive. And so I still am put off by that mechanic. I don't know how the math works. I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, the tabletop game, with Thaco, although I have played with the modern version of Armor Class, which is simply the Armor Class in D&D 5th Edition is the number you have to roll higher than to score a hit. So if a rat's armor class is 13, then you need to roll a 14 to hit it. Which is, I think, a great simplification of a once complicated mechanic. So this game, Planescape Torment, is quite the interesting game. It is very expansive. It takes place in the Planescape universe, which my campaign in my, my, the one, the campaign I run takes place in the Planescape universe as well. And this campaign, uh, takes place in Sigil, the City of Doors, which is a city that is on the inside of a dimensional torus, which is quite weird, I think. And there are portals all over the city. And right now I'm trying to relax myself because I got too involved talking about that. Um, I think now I will start tapping on something to give you a little bit of a break from me being... I know I said I wouldn't tap, but I just feel like tapping on something. So I, in my D&D &D campaign online, I somehow got, uh, I somehow got met, I, I pulled in to, um, pretty hardcore gamers who are a little bit on the off-putting side. These two guys are friends, but they put me off for some reason. I think they, they for some reason, their social skills are a little bit, not lacking, but they seem to have a, way of speaking and handling situations where they, um, they get into arguments. They got into an argument with another one of my players, causing him to quit. And they caused two people to quit. They caused two people to, um, quit, which I'm thinking about kicking them both because it is in my right to do so, but at the same time, I don't want to... They are... W when we were doing our our zero 
um, hour, our zero game, they were smack talking other DMs and smack talking um, players and smack talking various um, D and D wiki things. And while they seemed very well versed, they were just caustic. Their 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 style of play was caustic in its um their style of, of conversing was caustic and um gritty not gritty no 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 I'm looking for a word here I keep using caustic because it's the word I thought of but there's another word I'm reaching for it is um aberrant abrasive yes that's the word I was looking for it's abrasive um which in this situation means it feels like someone is sandpapering my mind. Abrasive, yeah. Now, on to a completely unrelated topic. The story of my um, AP uh, Lang, my AP English language test. Uh, I, I did the test, I took the test, and I w had been prepared in class, and I answered the questions, and I got to the essay portion and wrote two normal essays, and then I got to the third essay, and it was an essay, it said, America is losing to other countries in the creativity of their students. Write a letter to your school board supporting or um, not supporting the implementation of creativity classes in school. And I thought, creativity classes? That sounds like something a Soviet um, school system would do, like a, a Russian school system would go, we need to make you more creative. In Soviet Russia, we teach you how to be creative. And so, um, I pretended to be a Soviet, um, school examiner, and I said to the uh, headmaster of this school, your students are not creative enough, and as such, we will be implementing a creativity class. And I said something about <laughs> there being open spots in a gulag in Siberia, and I also said, thinking out of the box, I have contacted the Ministry of Packaging and Adhesives to figure out what this box may be. And at the end, I drew, like, a stamp with a backwards R and a couple of Russian-looking letters on it. I don't know any Russian, but... Uh, I got a 5 on the exam. I mean, that's the highest score you can get. And it's very admirable. So, I don't know if that essay was a 1 or a 5 or a 9, but I do know that I got a 5 on the exam, which is kind of impossible if you flunk one of the exams. So I have to think that um, the person who was reading the, that exam saw it and, and maybe it alleviated their exam boredom because what happens is in the AP test there are maybe a million applicants. No, not a million. 500,000, you know. There are a lot of test takers. And every single one of them writes three essays in handwriting that the graders then have to grade. And so for about three weeks during the summer, a bunch of teachers travel to one location and spend every single hour of every single day of those three weeks grading tests or grading essays 
that's absolute hell. I would hate to do that. That is just no. No. Spending eight hours a day grading essays in handwriting that may be very difficult to re to read and for kids who are some kids who do not work well or some kids who are too I don't know I mean all kinds of people take AP test and well I don't know I'm going to be reading a chapter from the Lysifia tomorrow. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. The video is not over yet, but I was just going to inform you. Uh, I don't know why, but there is this YouTuber who... I think is a very interesting person. I don't know his real name. His YouTube channel name is Mr. Beast. And the reason why I think he's interesting is because he loves to blow things up. And he loves to make jokes about YouTube money. And a giant Asian sticker. You just have to watch it to understand. He has a giant Asian sticker on his wall. And it is big. It is the size of a freaking bed sheet, this thing. It is. And it's just a picture of an Asian dude. Like a, a face shot of an Asian dude. And I just. And there's a picture of a granny using an inhaler on his wall, too. And I just thought, I, I think. This guy's weird. I like him, but he's, he's weird. And he makes jokes about, um, the reason why I think I like him so much is because he makes jokes about YouTube money and having to make another video. And he's like, <laughs> when his friend pranked him by pasting sticky notes all over his car in the shape of a, uh, a phallic, a phallus, and, um, he he said and he left this in after editing it he said thank you now i won't have to make a video today and i just thought <laughs> i i understand youtube is such an interesting place i think Instead of buying a Super Bowl ad for five million dollars, you should instead um, spend that five million dollars paying five cents per view on YouTube. That way you can target your audience, you can make sure they watch, you can have them click through if they're interested. Because lately, I've been impressed by the quality of YouTube ads. Regularly, at least every other day, I find a YouTube ad that I watch through without skipping. I find ads that I like. There are so many good YouTube ads. Because the YouTube mechanism promotes good ads. Good ads are crucial on YouTube. And there is more freedom because YouTube is an informal platform. And the style is each ad um there like there are no there are very few just advertisement ads anymore. What you see instead are sketch ads. They, and they're everywhere. And some of them are really good. Some of them I've watched several times without skipping because they're just that good. 
And I think YouTube is doing a really great job of cultivating a good advertising culture where ads are measured in how good they are. And it promotes good ads. I think I will stop here if you want. If you liked this style of video, where I do less tapping and more talking, then by all means tell me. And if you want me to do a video entirely tapping, like most other ASMR channels, then by all means ask away. I am open to pretty much anything as long as it's not uncouth. That's it. I'll see you on the other side.